How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and join our Windows 10 box to the Active Directory domain so that we can go through and test out both domain and non-domain connectivity in the event that we need to. The process is actually very, very simple. We just wanna make sure that we can actually ping our domain controller and all that good stuff. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get busy with the configuration. So our domain controller actually has an IP address that we want to make sure we want to validate real quick. We'll click on local server to make sure that we can pull that up. And the IP address that we are going to get is 10.255.1.51. So if I come back over here and I pull up the command prompt and I go to ping 10.255.1.51, I want to make sure that I have actually IP connectivity to it. Having that is rather important. The other thing that I need to do is right click here and go to network and sharing. And I'll need to validate that my D one of my DNS servers is actually that IP. So we'll go Ethernet 0, details, and it is not currently. The only one I have is Google. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to come over here to IPv4 properties, and then in here I'm going to put in 10.255.1.51 and then I'm going to put in Google. The reason why I need to put this one in here is so that it knows how to reach the local domain controller for D resolving DNS entries and things like that, but also needs quad 8 in the event that something locally can't be resolved, it'll go out to quad 8. So I'm going to go ahead and close all that out and we should be in pretty good shape. So I should be able to go back to here and continue pinging Google I'm sorry, I can ping and ping the domain controller, but also ping google.com, which I can. If I can ping google.com, that's a good sign for me. So that means I should still have internet access and all that good stuff. So what I need to do now is I actually need to come back to the, go to the control panel. So control panel, pull that up. And then I will go to system and security And then I will come down here to system. And then down here at the bottom, I will, I will click on change settings. And I will go to, it says to rename this computer or change its domain or work, work group, click change. And so in here, I'm gonna type in admin is the computer name. And then I'm gonna come down here to domain. I'm gonna type in lab.local. Once I do that, I should be able to click on OK, and I'll get a pop-up for the domain controller here in just a moment. And it asks me for my credentials. So I'm going to type in administrator, and then the password. Now, you can put in any value you want, as long as the value you put in here is a domain admin. I'm going to click on OK, and then after a moment or so, it's going to say, welcome to the lab.local domain. I'm going to click on OK, and Okay, again, give that a moment to do its thing. And changing the primary name of this computer. Okay, not that big of a deal. I'm gonna click on okay and close and then restart now. Then I'm gonna come over here to DC1. I'll click on tools and then DNS. And what we should see when we expand this guy right here is we should see a connection come in for the new device once it logs in and stuff like that. So the other thing that we're going to see is under tools and if we go underneath uh, ADUC, Active Directory Users and Computers, and we click on computers, we should see that uh, admin has joined. If we go underneath here and go properties, we'll see that it's admin has joined and it's admin.local. The OS is going to, we can populate a bunch of stuff in here if we want to, but that's basically what we, where we are at. So I'm gonna come back over here to Windows 10, and so we are in the process of trying to log in and all that good stuff. So I get to hurry up and uh, pause this now until it's finished installing, which it should be just about there. All right, so now we're gonna come in here and we're going to now have the option of an admin, and we're going to uh, come in and type in the password. Now, what's interesting about this is this is a local login, right? If I go other user, 
Then I'll have the option to sign in as lab. Notice it says lab right here. I'm gonna come in here as administrator. And then the password. Now, when you do that, it's interesting how it does that. If you go lab and then backslash and you type in administrator and then you type in the password, it should allow you to log in that way. So give it a couple of seconds to do its thing and you should be able to log in this way. And there we go. Now what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna get this first time login thing. So this is not a problem. This is just showing you that this is a first time login with this account on this new PC. So basically it's grab, grabbing the profile for you and all that type of stuff. So if you see this and you're like, oh my God, what happened? Not that big of a deal. Back, in, uh, back with Windows 7, well, and Windows 8, at least in, most of the time I was dealing, dealing with this with Windows 7, is you would see this and it would say, you know, downloading new profile and all that type of stuff. All of the Active Directory bits had to be downloaded. And oftentimes you'd have a profile and Active Directory that you'd have to work with. That's what's happening here. So don't worry about it if you see this. It's not a bad thing. It's what's supposed to happen. And then after a few minutes, everything will be good to go. All right, so we are now logged in. And if we go to the start menu here, and we go to uh, this guy right here, or I'm sorry, if we click in here and we go to do anything, we should, it should show us that we are logged in as, um, if we click right here, it's administrator, that's where it was. So if you click right, if you look right there, it's administrator. And so now we're at the point where we can start doing some interesting stuff. So we wanna actually install ESXi and all that type of stuff. So if we wanted to go and do anything, for example, we could come into the command prompt, type in CMD, pull this up. I'm actually going to pin this to the taskbar. And you'll notice that um, I have some additional icons up here. I'm gonna actually unpin this from the taskbar and unpin this from the taskbar because I really don't need them there. But you also notice that any of the stuff that needed to be installed or was installed from the local user pops up on our screen, which is nice. So now I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna type in NSLOOKUP and we're gonna see that our NSLOOKUP here is 10.255.1.51. We can't really look anything up because nothing's been deployed yet. Let's go to the control panel and we're gonna go to system and security and then we'll go to system and you'll see that now we are part of the lab.local domain. This is what you wanna see, right? This is a good sign. It tells me that everything's working the way that I need it to and all that good stuff. So right now, as far as I'm concerned, everything that we needed to have working in order for this to work, is working. So what I will do is I will end this video and in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and install ESXi 6.0 and then the process for 6.0, 6.5 and 6.7 is identical. So I'm only gonna show you the ones that really matter, which is the first one, and then walk you through the, in, the installation prep. And then between, once that's done, then we'll I'll go through and install the other ones and get them all squared away. So that's basically where we are at right now. We're good to go here. Uh, until next time, guys, take it easy.